Bob says, hey, come check this tire for me. Have to see if it's uh, inside or outside. And I was like, I may, you know, go either way. Inner side, right there, on top, in your face. So here's the deal. We got the OBS over here. We've got the rims for it. Our tires have finally come in. We had to wait a little while on those. So we're going to mount the tires so we can get the thing on there. We know we're going to have to modify that rear fender a little bit, so that should be pretty exciting. Now, my tire machine, unfortunately, does not go up to a 24. I don't even think it goes to 22, does it? So we're going to mount them right here on the floor because nobody in town wants to mount them because they're quite expensive and they all say, we don't, we don't want a part of it. So. Get a little ahead of myself here. We're gonna start seeing if we can make a little clearance right here. For these! <laughs> are they big enough? So, all right, here's kind of the plan. These are 24 by 12s, super awesome looking wheel. Uh, we obviously need to make some clearance. Uh, when Roadster Shop did their chassis, they basically did everything in CAD and mocked up on a fleet side truck. Uh, we had talked about swapping this over to a fleet side bed. The owners decided they did not want to do that. So you can look at the rendering and kind of see what we've done. And I think that's going to work well. I'm going to go ahead and take my awesome Indosa fine line, using Dasa for everything around here. I'm going to fine line out a mark around this tub section above this tape. And essentially what we're gonna do is cut that section out. We're gonna see if we can fit this wheel in there and then we're gonna start making clearances where we need it. And I'll tell you guys a little bit about how we're gonna section this back together. So let's get with it. All right, so I'm just pulling this for a guide for a cut line and I'm trying to get up out of the curve of the tub because we don't wanna cut into there. We wanna to try to use some of this flat surface so we can put the two back together a little easier than trying to work with a bend. We'll put a line right on it. It's just in case if it starts to get hot or anything while we're cutting it and the tape pulls away, at least we'll still have a mark there to go by. All right, so we're gonna drill a hole first because we're gonna use the air saw to make this cut happen. Probably not the most ideal tool to use right here because it's hard to cut it straight, but I'm not slinging this crap all over the shop, so. As far as uh, not making a mess, I think that's the best way for us to go. All right, so we've got both of those cut. We've got both the wheels fit. We've got the truck sitting where we want it. We've got plenty of clearance in here. So next thing's gonna be to fiberglass that. I'm not ready to do the fiberglass work yet because we're up here in the front shop. We'll take it back there to the body shop to do all that nasty work. So what we're gonna do now is hop up here to this door. We're gonna see if we can take care of the rest of this metal work before we move it out back. Now, they already had these shaved and we might have shown the other side where we've already started to repair that. The problem that we're, we've got going on right here, I can see the swelling of the door handle. So the reason that that's swelling, 
I'm gonna predict there's probably about that much filler in there if I had to guess. So it's probably just, you know, warped metal work or either they welded the panel on from behind. Actually, we can find that out real quick. So we're gonna grind all this filler out. So let's see, I'm just gonna make a spot in it. We'll see how deep this is. Look at that. That's probably, man, three eighths, if not half an inch thick, probably. So yeah, that right there is not gonna cut it. Now with this being garage kept, not really being outside, it's it's held up pretty good. But if you had this outside for a while where all this is swelling, it ended up cracking. So what we're gonna do is get in here, strip this out, cut out that metal work and put in a new patch. See if we can dig it in, get it all metal finished and should be good to go on the door, hopefully. Look at that, we've got so metal, filler, or I don't, I don't know if that's filler or if that's kitty hair, I think it's filler. Looks like primer, more filler, primer, more filler, primer. Looks like a glaze putty under that. Sealer or primer than base. Woo! Bad. It's real bad. It's real bad. Guess is where the door handle was, huh? Winner gets a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, so that's what they did. Uh, so basically what they did, they removed the factory door handle, probably went in from the back side with a piece of sheet metal, held it in from the back and welded it. Actually, I think the other one we pulled it out, I don't even think it was welded. I think it was epoxied in there. So we'll see what they got going on once we cut it out. So here's our game plan right now. I'm gonna strip out little section, get to some good bare metal right here. We're gonna go ahead and shape us out a new panel. We can make it as big as we want, long as it's bigger than this opening right here. We'll go ahead and shape it to the door and we'll scribe out a nice little area and get all that cut out and should be able to weld in a new piece. So let me get back. that when you need it. All right, you leave all that crap out. I'm gonna radius our corners that way when we go to weld. Metal will take the heat a little better. A little bit less warping. All right, so we've got roll in the door, obviously. Our piece of sheet metal's flat, so we gotta get a little bend in that, so we're gonna create a little roll. Could go to the English wheel, be pretty quick, but I've got this high dollar metal machine right here with a nice round bar. Let's see if we can get a little bit started. Not a lot, because it'll... Tell you about the time that I was in school in upholstery class and a guy ran his finger through the sewing machine. I think you're telling me. See how it overlaps right here? What I'm gonna do is cut it all the way across and into here, and then I'm gonna make that fold back over and just kind of recreate that as opposed to running a butt weld down through there as well.
damage. So took the cutoff wheel and just made kind of a rough cut above the line that I've scribed right there. Instead of trying to cut on the line with the cutoff wheel, you don't tend to get as nice of a cut and as even. So we'll cut close to it and then we'll snip on the line because you can see how nice and clean of a line we're getting. We're able to get it right on that line. So normally you've got almost perfect fitment to get a nice butt weld. Where the door handle was see the filler so basically they epoxied it in there i guess which it worked i mean hey it held up for all these years i think they did that back in early 2000s or the 90s but yeah not really the right way to do it so we got to burn some metal back together All right, so we cut a couple of small pieces of metal and we clee coated in, so we drilled an eighth inch hole, used our trusty clee coats. That's really the way I like to do it because it's gonna pull it together real nice and get it good and even so you get that nice butt weld. I mean, you can also use magnets. I mean, we'll do that a lot too, but I just really like that clee coat. So I'll take the time to, to cut a couple of coupons and put it in there that way. But I think we're ready to weld. So we're actually getting some parts in finally. You know how with today's times it's, taking a while to get stuff in. So we've got this masterpiece right here, the Entropy Radiator. We've been using these in all our builds. These things are awesome. Um, not had one single issue with any one of them. And I mean, just look at the product, man. This thing is unbelievable. Look at the welds. Doesn't that make you mad? Man, jealous. But we've got um, Holly accessory drive for the engine that came in. We've got our MagnaFlow builder's kit, three inch exhaust that we'll be able to do. And that'll be really cool having this truck this low, but we can still run a three inch exhaust. So that's awesome. But um, the heart of this baby, come check this out. LSX 454. So remember we had that big blower and big block in there, which was really cool. I'll admit I liked it. Uh, but we're going the small block route with the LSX. Uh, we're gonna be pro-charging this as well. So we're gonna make some pretty big power. Uh, we've got an intake around here somewhere. It's a Holly as well. Like I said, the Holly accessory drive. So it should look really cool. Excited to start fitting everything in there. Get all those engine panels made. So she's gonna be bad. Mmm, handiest tool in the shop right there. All right, just about ready to TIG weld. So we've got our Lincoln TIG 200 square wave. This is probably one of the handiest welders we have in the shop because it's small enough that we can maneuver it around. It's got a 110 hookup. I think it can also be converted over to 220. I've got the big boy over there, the Aspect 230. Man, that machine is something else. But I have to say, if you're doing any TIG welding, this one right here, aluminum as well as steel. So this is the way to go. All right, just watch your eyeballs. Just get a couple little baby tacks going where we can get rid of these Clecos because we need to hammer and dolly as we go. As we hammer and dolly, we're kind of planishing those welds TIG's a little bit of a softer weld, so that's gonna help to knock it down anyway, but sheet metal wise, I think TIG's the way to go because you're not getting that high build like with a MIG welder, so it's easier to clean up and metal finish. There's a lot less grinding, so um, i definitely try to work it out with a TIG if you can. All right, coming together. 
looking good, nice and flat, even. All right, so we've got a lot more welding to do. I'm gonna get this finished up. Essentially, all we're gonna do with this is we'll go around with 36 grit on our angle grinder. We'll knock our welds down. Uh, we'll DA over that and hey, it's ready for filler. As I'm doing that, I'm kind of hopping up here and I'm finishing this last stake pocket. Um, so yeah, making good progress. The next time you guys see this truck, guess what? We'll probably be doing more metal work.